The movie starts with a secret fighting place in a small Montana town, where a woman named Frankie goes there to meet a man named Carter, who always wins fights. She wants to hire him as a guard for her bar by the beach in Glass Key City. Frankie finds out Carter is fighting in the arena and is happy to know he's won six fights in a row. Shortly after, another man challenges Carter at the arena. Carter is very proud and thinks no one can beat him. But when he sees his opponent is Dalton, he decides to leave because he's scared of what might happen if he fights Dalton. Even though people call him a coward, Lewis, who lost a $500 bet because of Dalton, suddenly stamps him with a knife. Shortly after, Frankie sees Dalton trying to treat his wound and offers him a job as a guard at her bar called Roadhouse. She'll pay him $5,000 every week for a month because some troublemakers have been causing problems at the bar every night. Frankie tried asking the police for help, but it didn't work. A friend told Frankie to find a man named Carter here. But after seeing him, Frankie decides she wants to hire Dalton instead. However, Dalton refuses Frankie's offer to work with her and suggests she find someone else. Undeterred, Frankie writes down her barn's address and says she'll wait if he changes his mind. Shortly after, while listening to a radio show about a USC fight, Dalton drives until he gets to a railroad crossing. Instead of waiting, he feels an urge to do the unthinkable by parking his car in the path of an oncoming train. After surviving, Dalton decides to go to Frankie's place. At the bus stop, Dalton meets Charlie, a young woman who works at her father Stephen's bookstore. Charlie asks Dalton what brought him to this small town, and he replies to came to work at Roadhouse. Hearing this, Stephen and his daughter are surprised there's someone new willing to work there. Stephen then gives him Roadhouse's location and tells him to keep walking until the last marker, 7-7, seven to seven, and welcomes him to Glass Key. After arriving at Roadhouse, Dalton meets Laura, the bartender, and Billy, a waiter who happens to recognize Dalton. Billy knows Dalton used to be a USC fighter with a great reputation. Hearing this, Dalton feels proud that someone still remembers him and is glad to be in such a peaceful place. As night falls, Dalton enjoys the lively atmosphere and the music playing. Suddenly, a group of troublemakers enters the bar. It turns out they're the ones causing problems at Frankie's bar lately. Dell, the leader of the gang, starts making a scene by breaking things and bothering the female staff. At that moment, Billy tries to step in, but seeing what's happening, Dalton approaches them and asks Billy to handle the other customers. Dalton then suggests to Dell to talk outside the bar, but Dell seems reluctant as he's still enjoying causing trouble inside. Eventually, they go outside, but Dell remains very irritated with Dalton. Especially when he asks him to leave, Dell even mocks Dalton. However, Dalton easily overpowers them without getting hurt himself. Instead of fighting back, he decides to take them to the hospital because some of their bones are broken and they're badly bruised. At the hospital, Dalton meets a doctor named Ellie, who isn't happy about the chaos caused by their silly fight. She and her colleagues have to work extra hours to treat their injuries. They should have called the police to avoid such mess, but Dalton thinks it wouldn't have helped much because he believes the police don't care about these people. Suddenly, Dalton's stomach wound opens again, and Ellie tries to treat it. After coming back from the hospital, Frankie meets Dalton and pays him his weekly wage as agreed. Dalton accepts it and asks why the bar is named Roadhouse. Frankie then explains that her late uncle owned the bar before passing it on to her. He named it as a joke because it's the only one in town. Frankie also offers Dalton to stay on her uncle's boat instead of spending money on a hotel, but warns him to be careful because there's a big alligator living underneath. The following day, Dalton wakes up to Laura on the boat, who brings him breakfast. At that moment, Laura thanks him for dealing with Dell and his friends because before he arrived, there were many guards at Roadhouse who couldn't last more than two days. Laura was thinking of leaving, but seeing what Dalton did changed her mind, and she hoped things would improve there. Dalton didn't expect the incident to make him so well-known in the Glass Key area. Now, everyone he meets greets him and asks how he's doing. He wonders if there's a meeting arranged for everyone to know his name. Frankie then explains that there's a lot of gossip around, so people quickly learn about him. On a boat, Mo and Snap face their boss, Ben. At that moment, 
Ben asks about their progress in terrorizing the residents of Glass Key, as he heard they were defeated by a barkeeper. Ben also asks about Dell's whereabouts, since he's not present. Mo explains that Dell is still in the hospital after the fight. This news upsets Ben even more, because he paid them a lot to scare the Glass Key residents, but they were beaten by a barkeeper. Ben doesn't care about the situation. He just wants them to finish their job as he wants. Vince, noticing Ben's frustration, suggests it might be time to involve the old man. Not long after, Roadhouse returned to its usual lively atmosphere, with people gathering to enjoy themselves. Dalton, noticing the commotion, teaches Billy some basic fighting techniques to manage the crowd. He advises Billy to stay calm and not be afraid, instructing him to step back, duck, and then deliver a quick punch if needed. From then on, Billy gradually takes on Dalton's role as a security guard at Roadhouse, alongside his friend Reef, who received a direct invitation from Dalton to join him. On the other hand, Dalton finds himself haunted by memories of his past UFC fights. While having breakfast at a cafe, he coincidentally encounters Ellie. At that moment, Ellie subtly warns Dalton about the ways of dealing with problems in Glass Key. She advises him to be cautious, as getting on the wrong side of someone could lead to serious trouble, and the police aren't as helpful as they should be. Despite the caution, Ellie encourages Dalton to continue enjoying his life in Glass Key and to have fun in his own way. In the evening, Dalton is in Frankie's room to get his weekly wages and look around. Frankie also thanks Dalton for his time there. As Dalton walks home over a bridge, suddenly Dell's car tries to hit him. Despite the attempt, Dalton survives and returns to the boat where he's staying. However, he's shocked to find Dell already there, armed with a rifle and intent on killing him. Dell is angry that Dalton interfered with his plans and hopes they won't cross paths again. During the fight, Dell falls into the sea, but soon after, the rumored alligator appears and eats Dell's body. The old man with Dalton suggests that the alligator must have hidden Dell's body just like his dog was eaten by the alligator. He wonders why Dell was there, speculating if he was interfering with their affairs. Sensing something suspicious, Dalton visits Charlie's place to gather information about Roadhouse and other locations. After that, he learns that Roadhouse's location is advantageous for shipping goods through the sea due to the nearby deep waters, allowing ships to dock easily. Returning from Charlie's, Dalton is confronted by Ben's henchmen outside. Sam, one of them, informs Dalton that Ben wants to meet him. Sam also threatens to take Dalton by force if he refuses, but Dalton finds it amusing and suggests that if Sam wants to be intimidating, he should act more convincingly. He insists that if Ben wants to talk, he should come to Roadhouse, where Dalton works. Shortly after, Frankie is surprised to see Dalton in her room and asks about his well-being after the events of the previous night. She's pleased to hear that Dell died, but Dalton is more concerned about why Dell always caused trouble at Roadhouse. Although Frankie doesn't understand, she asks Dalton not to dwell on it. On the other hand, Sam meets Ben and informing him that the guard has injured his finger and relays the message that if Ben wants to meet, he must come himself. Ben becomes furious upon hearing this because a guard has suddenly appeared and is now disrupting his plans for the place. At that moment, his phone rings, but he angrily throws it into the sea upon answering. Elsewhere, a hitman named Knox receives a call from an inmate at a Florida correctional facility seeking his help with the problem caused by his son's actions. Meanwhile, Ellie meets Dalton on the boat where he stays and invites him to a secluded spot using a boat she knows from her ex-boyfriend. They spend the afternoon together on a submerged island, enjoying each other's company. At that moment, Ellie tells Dalton that Dell's body hasn't been found by the police, and she warned him about not upsetting certain people, especially Ben, a powerful figure from a respected family in Florida who built much of the city. This alarms Dalton, and he asks Ellie to take him back to the dock, especially since she doesn't know who he truly is. Ellie then reveals that she knows Dalton's true identity and what has happened to him. She even thought what they were doing was a date. After a long journey, Knox arrives at Ben's residence. Step questions him because of the disturbance he caused, especially when they found their motorcycles damaged by his car. Shortly after, Ben arrives and meets Knox, 
who unexpectedly punches him and declares he's there on his father's orders. Ben's father instructed him to clean up the mess caused by Ben. Even though his father is in prison, his network and spies are everywhere, keeping an eye on Ben's actions. Knox will use Ben's house as his own and asks about the guard who disrupted his business. He assures that he'll handle the issue, confident that there's no problem he can't solve. Shortly after returning from the picnic, two police officers approach Dalton and ask him to come with them to answer questions about Dell's death. They take him to a location where they meet Sheriff Tom Lem, who claims to be the top authority in Monroe County, specifically overseeing Glass Key. Tom wants Dalton to leave peacefully, warning that refusal could lead to his arrest. Feeling uneasy by Tom's threatening behavior, Dalton is forcefully taken out of the car and begins to be assaulted by him. Just as Tom is about to shoot him, Ellie, who had been suspicious since she accompanied him back to the dock, intervenes to stop her father's actions. It turns out Tom is Ellie's father. She explains how, after her mother's death, she left Glass Key but returned upon realizing her father's involvement with Gerald, Ben's imprisoned father, who used to operate a fleet of rental boats for tours and drugs. Now her father works for Gerald's son, and she urges Dalton to leave Glass Key immediately. Meanwhile, Vince and Sam are seen at Stephen's bookstore, plotting to destroy it. That night, Dalton is already at Roadhouse when Ben arrives to meet him. At that moment, Ben attempts to bribe Dalton into leaving the city, showing him a YouTube video of Dalton's last USC fight, which was deleted due to a horrific incident. Ben reveals that Dalton fought against his close friend, and the incident tarnished everything he had achieved. After that, Ben bids farewell. Shortly after, Knox entered Roadhouse and began causing trouble. Dalton eventually put a stop to Knox's trouble, and no one could intervene. The prolonged fight left Dalton feeling like he couldn't do much more at that place. After that, he decided to quit his job there and leave town, despite Frankie calling him a coward for being scared of those people. As Dalton reached the bus stop, he witnessed Stephen's store burning down by Vince. He asked the firefighter about Charlie and her father's whereabouts, learning they were taken to the hospital by ambulance. Seeing this, Dalton resolved to stay in town and take down Ben and his henchmen. Dalton then arrived at Ben's place and found Vince cleaning up. Dalton revealed to Vince that he had intended to leave and avoid dealing with their group again. However, their actions towards Charlie compelled him to return and confront them. Suddenly, Dalton delivers a single blow to Vince's throat, causing him unable to breathe. Just as Dalton was about to leave, he unexpectedly encountered Mo and asked about Ben's whereabouts. Mo, visibly scared, revealed that Ben was scheduled to have a meeting at Harvest Key at 5 o'clock a.m. to collect some money for urgent needs. The scene then showing Dalton's final fight in the USC arena. At that moment, Dalton competed against his best friend for the prestigious heavyweight championship. However, overcome by emotions, he lost control and accidentally caused his friend's death in the arena. In the present, Dalton was on the coast, monitoring the transfer of a significant amount of money to the bank. He devised a plan to intercept the money and disable the police responsible for delivering it to Ben. Back on his boat, Dalton prepared a bomb as part of his scheme. Shortly after, Tom approached him, urging him to return the money to Ben. Tom revealed that Ellie was now being held hostage, and they threatened to harm her if the money wasn't returned immediately. At that moment, Tom pleaded with Dalton to assist him in retrieving the money before noon, emphasizing the importance of his daughter's safety. Moved by Tom's plea, Dalton agreed to help and vowed to deliver the money to Ben himself. After forcibly bringing Ellie's ex-boyfriend's boat, Dalton immediately headed to Ben's boat out in the middle of the ocean. Before disembarking, he activated the bomb he had prepared. Upon arrival, Dalton encountered Ben and Tom, who appeared calm despite Ellie supposedly being held captive. Tom revealed that Ellie's kidnapping was a ploy to lure Dalton there. However, Tom was furious upon learning that Ben had actually kidnapped Ellie without his knowledge, questioning why his daughter was dragged into the situation. Suddenly, Knox caught up with them on a stolen boat. Seizing the opportunity, Dalton detonated his bomb, causing a massive explosion. Amidst the chaos, 
Dalton searched for Ellie trapped inside the boat. After freeing her, Ellie boarded a ship where Ben was waiting. At that moment, Ben subdued her and took her away, while Knox pursued Dalton, trying to kill him. Despite Knox's efforts, Dalton managed to seize the boat's rope and attempted to throw Knox off the boat. Dalton then rammed the boat, causing Knox to leap onto Ben's boat and plunge into the sea. Knox survived and tried to reach shore, heading towards Roadhouse. Meanwhile, Dalton narrowly avoided a harpoon shot by Ben and began to confront him, just as Knox arrived crashing a stolen car. Their second confrontation unfolded there. Dalton and Knox engaged in a fierce battle, each using their fighting skills to overpower the other. At that moment, Knox managed to stab Dalton in the stomach with a knife, just as Ben intervened, instructing Knox to finish Dalton off immediately. Displeased with Ben's command, Knox turned on him, breaking Ben's neck and killing him. Despite his injuries, Dalton rose and relentlessly stabbed Knox with the knife until he died. Tom, who had arrived on the scene, urged Dalton to leave immediately and promising to cover up his actions. As the movie concluded, Dalton was seen waiting for a bus at the stop to head home. Charlie, now discharged from the hospital, expressed her gratitude to Dalton for his act. Dalton then handed her and her father a suitcase containing Ben's money. More a lesson from the story, sometimes, it's better to run from a fight than end up as an alligator snack. But if trouble keeps finding you, just make sure you bring your own knife to the dinner table.